Good morning and welcome to this morning's morning prayer on this very special Ascension Day. We start on the, in the Anglican prayer book, if you follow with us, on page 42. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Jesus, when he had offered one sacrifice forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. We say Psalm 100 together. A shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in nearness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm set for today is Psalm 24 and can be found on page 631 in your Anglican prayer book. I'll read the psalm. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the compass of the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it up on the seas and established it upon the waters. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not, who has not set his soul upon idols, nor sworn his oath to a lie. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and recompense from the, from the God of his salvation. Of such a kind as this are those who seek him. Those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading for today is taken from the Old Testament and it can be found in Ezekiel. We'll be reading Ezekiel 1, 1 to 14 and then 24 to 28. Ezekiel 1, 
1 to 14. In the 30th year, in the fourth month of the first of the fifth day, while I was among the exiles by the Kiba River, the heavens were opened and I saw the visions of God. On the fifth of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehuhachan. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, by the Kiba River in the land of the Babylonians. There is the hand of the Lord was upon him. I looked and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by brilliant light. The centre of the fire looked like glowing metal and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance their form was that of a man, but each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, their feet were like those of a calf and gleamed like burnished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had the hands of a man. All four of them had faces and wings, and their wings touched one another. Each one went straight ahead, and they did not turn as they moved. Their faces looked like this. Each of the four had the face of a man, and on the right so side each had the face of a lion, and on the left side on the left side the face of an ox. Each also had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread out upward. Each had two wings, one touching the wing of another creature on either side, and two wings covering its body. Each one went straight ahead. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go, without turning as they went. The appearance of the living creatures was like burning coals of fire, or like torches. Fire moved back and forth among the creatures. It was bright, and lightning flashed out of it. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning. We continue at verses 24. When the creatures moved, I heard the sound of their wings, like the roar of rushing waters, like the voice of the Almighty, like the tumult of an army. When they stood still, they lowered their wings. Then there came a voice from above the expanse over their heads, as they stood with lowered wings. Above the expanse over their heads was that looked like a throne of sapphire, and high above on the throne was a figure like that of a man. I saw that, from what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like a glowing metal, as if full of fire, and that from there down looked like fire, and brilliant light surrounded him, like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell face down. And I heard the voice of the one speaking. Here ends the first lesson. I will be reading Canticle number eight, a song of assurance. God works for good in everything with those who loved him. We are called according to his purpose. For those whom he, whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And to those whom he justified, he has also given his splendor. If God is on our side, who can ever be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely give us all things? It is God who justifies, who then can ever condemn us. For it is Christ Jesus who died and was raised from the dead, who is at God's right hand to plead our cause. What can separate us from the love of Christ? 
can persecution or hunger, can peril or the sword. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The second reading this morning comes from the New Testament, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, and I'll be reading from verse 5 to 18. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we were speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is man that you are mindful of him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowded him with glory and honor and put everything under his feet. In putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at present we do not see everything subject to him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honour, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are all made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I, and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in the, their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become merciful and faithful high priest in the service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Here ends the second lesson. Before we go in a time of prayer this morning, I would like to read a prayer to you that I came across. Um, it's a prayer for, for the celebration of Ascension, and I thought it's very applicable to today. And it was written in 2020 by a person by the name of Cornelius Plantica. Prayer for the celebration of Ascension. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, you emptied yourself of heaven's riches and came to share our lot. You made yourself poor so that by your poverty we might become rich. Perfect in purity, you yet submitted to baptism like any sinner in need of cleansing. Perfect in fellowship with the Father and the Spirit. You yet sought the friendship of Lazarus, Mary, Martha, and the other disciples. Word of God incarnate, wisdom from on high. You med mediated at creation, pouring your pouring your self-giving love into the world. You mediated in salvation, taking our flesh, taking our pain, taking the death we deserved. You arose in might and have gone home from battle. You mediate for us now in heaven. You have ascended on high for us and for our salvation. We thank you 
and praise you with tender hearts. Our minds do not grasp the length and breadth, the height and depth of your love for us sinners. Our minds do not grasp your unfathomable love, but our hearts hold it. Our hearts do hold it. God of all providence, in Jesus Christ you give loving water for the thirsty, bread of life for the hungry, the shelter of your wings for the fearful. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, thank you for your mercy. Dim in knowledge, I call to you, Christ, be my light. Cold of heart, I cry to you, Christ, be my warmth. Unsure at crossroads, I appeal to you, Christ, be my guide. Shine through the darkness, always be my light, my warmth, my guide. Lord Jesus Christ, your followers need you. Let whatever is ugly in us become small. Let whatever is beautiful become large. Let our fears become small. Let our confidence in you become large. Shrink our pride. Enlarge our humility. Shrink our envy. Enlarge our gratitude. Rise above our pettiness, O Lord Christ. Rise above our sorrows and fears. And let us rise with you. Amen. We continue with the song of the church. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. You are true and only Son, worthy of worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. We say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We will now go, now go into a time of prayer. Lord, remember not our offences, nor the offences of our forebears. Spare us, good Lord. Spare your people whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the cunning assaults of the devil, from the wrath of the everlasting condemnation, good Lord, deliver us. From all spiritual blindness, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, malice and all incharitableness, good Lord, deliver us. From disorientated and sinful affections, from the deceits of the world and the snares of the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From all the false doctrine, hearsay and chism, from hardness of heart and from contempt of your word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning, fire and tempest, from earthquake, drought and flood, from famine, plague and pestilence, good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy and rebellion, from violence, battle and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good Lord, deliver us. We'll, do, we'll say prayers of intercession now. Hear our prayers, O Lord, our God. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that it unity which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world, and to make disciples of all nations. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten all bishops, priests and deacons with true knowledge and understanding, that by their life and teaching they might proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word, to find and follow their true vocation, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand, stand comfort and help the faint-hearted. Rise up the fallen and finally be down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of the nations into the way of peace and justice. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten and direct our rulers. Grant that they might put their trust in you and seek only your honour and glory. Hear us, good Lord. Grant wisdom and insight to all in authority and to judges and magistrates the grace to administer justice with mercy. Hear us, good Lord. Give to all nations peace, unity and concord and grant to all people freedom and dignity, food and shelter. Hear us, good Lord. Teach us to use the resources of the earth to your glory that all may share in your goodness and praise you for your loving kindness. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten with your spirit all who teach and all who learn. 
Hear us, good Lord. Help and comfort the lonely and aged, the bereaved, the overworked, the exploited and the oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Support and encourage all who are in poverty, unemployment or distress. Protect those whose work is dangerous and keep in safety all who travel. Hear us, good Lord. Keep fathers, mothers and children united in their family life and give them wisdom and strength in times of stress. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick in mind and body. Strengthen and preserve all women in childbirth and all young children. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphaned, all migrant workers and refugees, the homeless and victims of strife. Have pity on prisoners and all who live in fear. Hear us, good Lord. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and, and turn their hearts. Hear us, good Lord. We continue with a thanksgiving for the church. Almighty God, we praise you for the blessings brought to humankind through your church. We bless you for the grace of the sacraments, for our fellowship in Christ, with you and one another, for the teaching of the scriptures and for the preaching of your word. We thank you for the holy example of your saints for your faithful servants departed this life, and for the memory and example of all that has been true and good in their lives. Number us with them in the company of the redeemed in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We'll conclude with the act of praise. To God the Father, who loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved. To God the Son, who loved us and loosed us from our sins by his own blood. To God the Holy Spirit, who pours the love of God into our hearts. To the one true God, be all love and all glory for time and for eternity. Now to him, who by the power at work within us, is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue now with the collect of the day. Eternal Father, your reign extends beyond space and time. Grant that in this world of changing things, we may hold fast to your promises that endure forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The College for Peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The morning collect is... Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for you and one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>